This is the video for Unit 7. It is a um, relatively short unit overall. We are going to be talking about equilibria of complex ions and how um, solubility is affected by the addition of certain ions. Um, it's very similar to what you're going to be doing in lab for one of your uh, lab handouts. Um, and so I just want to cover it a little bit. If you have an equilibria, like the one that's shown here, let's change this to yellow, a little bit more visible, um, where we have a solid that partially dissolves into solution, you would have an equilibria where you only include the aqueous substances. You would not include the solid. Now, because of that, we can call this K, KSP or K, which is a solubility product. It's really the same thing as before. It's just an equilibrium expression that does not have anything to do with solids or liquids, only aqueous and gaseous substances. So if you were comparing the solubility um, of salts at a given temperature, does a higher KSP value necessarily mean a higher solubility? If we go back for a second, you see like, um, Let's do, AGCL gives an AG and a CL minus. So our KSP here would be AG and CL minus. If our KSP value is the same, does it mean that the solubility of our solid that dissolved is the same? Hopefully you will see that the answer is no, because you have different expressions for each salt. You can only compare ones that have the same um, type of expression. I mean, look here, the solubility has several exponents down here. It's just ones, and so you can't really do that. There we go. So let's calculate the solubility of silver chloride in water. Here, AgCl splits into Ag plus and Cl minus. Our KSP value is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 10, which is equal to the concentration of Ag plus times the concentration of chloride. The solubility, the amount of this that dissolves, is equal because of this one-to-one -one ratio to the concentration of Ag plus and it's equal to the concentration of Cl minus. So we can just plug in and find what the concentration of these two things are to get our overall solubility. So 1.6 times 10 to the minus 10 is equal to x squared. Take the square root of both sides. And 10. And you should get something like 1.26 times 10 to the minus 5 molar. That is the solubility of silver chloride that will dissolve. Very, very little. If we look at silver phosphate, silver phosphate is going to dissociate to give three Ag pluses plus a phosphate ion. And the KSP here is equal to the concentration of Ag plus cubed times the concentration of phosphate. But if you look, whatever you have here, 3PO4, it's going to give you 1 to 3. It's going to give you 3 Ag pluses, or 1 here. So this is really minus x, 3x, plus x. So when we plug in our values, um, hmm, it's really the same as saying 3x cubed times x. Which is um, 27x cubed times x, which is 27x to the fourth, is equal to 1.8 times 10 to the minus 18. Um, so we can divide both sides by 27. And 
that's going to give you 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus 20. You take the fourth root, and x is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 5. So even though the solubilities are very much the same, the KSP value is very, very different. And so this kind of confirms what we saw on the last slide, that KSP and solubility are not directly related um, from one thing to another. You have to consider what the expression is. Um, oops. So how does the solubility oh, of water, <laughs> how does the solubility of silver chloride in water compare to that in acidic solution? Well, let's look. Ag and Cl. If we have, look at these conjugates. Chloride came from HCl, which is a strong acid. So Cl minus is a weak conjugate base. It is not going to try and take anything from water to form HCl and hydroxide. It's not going to happen. And so it's going to be relatively stable whether you're in water or an acid solution. It doesn't care. Um, so our solubility is going to be the same. Meanwhile, if we look at silver phosphate, phosphate is a, um, came from a weak acid, H3PO4. If this is weak, it means that this is a strong conjugate. A strong conjugate will very readily react with water to produce HPO4 2 minus and hydroxide. It's technically double. But because of that, it's going to reduce the concentration of phosphate and it's going to cause more of it to be dissolve to try and keep your um, KSP equal. And so it's going to be more soluble in an acidic solution. So again, consider how Lachantier's principle is affecting these. What about the KSP value, guys? KSP is the same as any other equilibrium constant. It is a constant, so it should be the same. It better be because it's a constant. So here, let's look at how a common ion will affect solubility. So we know the solubility of AgCl just by itself. Let's look at how adding a common ion would affect it. And adding a common ion should shift AgCl, Ag plus Cl minus. If you add in some of this, it should shift the equilibrium this way, meaning less, it's going to be less soluble overall. Okay, so that's what we should see here. So if we add in CaCl2, we have calcium plus 2Cl minus. So if we had 4 times 10 to the minus 3 molar, we know that every time we have 1 CaCl2, we have 2 Cal negatives. It gives us overall 8 times 10 to the minus 3 molar Cl. So up here, we know that our KSP value is equal to Ag times Cl minus. So we can plug in our values and say that this is equal to x. And technically, this is also going to be x plus 8 times 10 to the minus 3. We know that this 8.0 times 10 to the minus 3 is much bigger than this. So we can actually discount the x here and say that it's x times the amount of chloride we added in from another source. Divide both sides by 8.0 times 10 to the minus 3. And x here is equal to negative 10 divided by 
8 e e negative 3 2 times 10 to the negative 8. This is very much smaller than the one on the, the previous slide, like something like 100 times less soluble. So adding in a common ion did shift the equilibrium this way, so it did prove Lachantier's principle. If we add in calcium nitrate, calcium and nitrate are not involved in this expression whatsoever. So it's just going to be our KSP is equal to Ag times Cl minus. Since we know that this is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 10 is equal to x squared. Take the square root of both sides. And you're still going to get that same 1.26 times 10 to the minus 5. Much more soluble. Doesn't have any effect because there's no common uh, ion here. Same as in previous chapters, guys. If you look at your Q, if your Q is bigger than your KSP, it means you have too much product. And so the way that it's going to shift that is you're going to have some precipitation happen. You're going to have it move to the left. And then it's going to continue to do that until your K and Q are equal. If Q is smaller than KSP, no precipitation happens because you actually have more reactants than products. And so if anything, it's going to shift to the right. You can actually go through a series of choosing how to precipitate out a specific ion by using solubility rules. And so it's really kind of an interesting phenomenon that we can allow for um, the selection of specific ions. This is really important for like water purification, for wastewater treatment, for um, industrial waste for things that are super toxic to be cleaned out of the water before it is either dumped down the drain or fed into uh, wildlife again. And so the way we do that is we maintain the solubility. So for example, sulfides are relatively insoluble. And so we can take advantage of the fact that we can precipitate out certain things at low pH. And then by adding into a different pH, precipitate out the others on the same solubility. And also choose to precipitate out things like lead, silver, and mercury by adding in chlorides or other halides. You can then precipitate out these guys by adding in a sulfide. You can precipitate out hydroxides and target specific elements. It really allows us to get very selective about what stays in solution and what is going to be precipitated out. We could also talk about how, in addition to forming true neutral compounds, you can actually have what's called a ligand or coordination bonds. Um, these are important for medical purposes. And the idea here is beryllium or another species could bond with a ligand. And while it may not stop at making a neutral compound, it can keep going to make charged species repeatedly. And um, the idea is each step, just like with polyprotic acids, is going to be less likely to happen. Um, it's just a matter of maximizing your stability. So if you want to get rid of a specific uh, substance out of solution, you can either acidify it or you can attach a ligand that will pull it out of solution. And that's it for this unit.